Uh, good morning. Thank you all for, for joining us uh, early in the morning. I appreciate it. A um, uh, couple of housekeeping items I wanted to get out of the way uh, before we get started. Um, first of all, uh, if you know of any students at area colleges or universities uh, that would be eligible for the Dr. Joe McAdoo Memorial Scholarship, we are taking applications for that. Um, we delayed the implementation of that award until the fall because of everything that's been going on. Uh, so we are collecting applications now on our website. So uh, if you know of students who might be interested, um, you can send them to swmoprsa.org slash students uh, for more information and i'll drop that link here in the chat in a little bit um, that scholarship is going to be for spring of 2021 um, so there's more information about eligibility on the website as well um, second item of business um, i want you to mark your calendar for our september virtual event that's going to be on tuesday september 22nd uh, and that's going to be at the same time on that day 815 uh, that's going to be a panel on media relations, specifically uh, how the process of successfully pitching story ideas to the media changes during uh, times of crisis or, um, you know, the pandemic that we're going through right now. Uh, we have several great panelists already lined up for that, and we're going to be sending out uh, registration info and information about that event very soon, so look forward to that. Um, but with that, let's get on to today's event. And a reminder that if you have questions during the presentation, you can go ahead and drop those in the chat box. And um, hopefully we'll have time for the presenters to address those at the end. So as we are all um, acutely aware by now, um, communication during a crisis or times of uncertainty uh, becomes infinitely more difficult, but it's also infinitely more important. Uh, especially when it comes to making sure that employees and colleagues remain engaged and connected. Um, so what do we do to help keep engagement levels high, especially as we're physically scattered across multiple locations? Um, well, I mean, I don't think there's anyone who's more aware of the needs in those areas than the folks at Cox Health. Uh, and thankfully, two of their communications experts are here to tell us about their approach to the task. Uh, Yvette Williams is the Director of Corporate Communications, and Randy Berger is Internal Communications Manager. And with that, I will hand the presentation over to you. So I think Randy was going to start. So welcome to you both. Thank you, Jeremy. Really appreciate that. Good morning, everybody. It's uh, good, to, good to see you in, in the way that we see people now. Uh, very, very excited to see everybody join us this morning. And we really, um, we really appreciate everything that PRSA is doing as well to kind of keep everybody connected and have been enjoying the, the virtual events that I've gotten to, to participate in. So we appreciate uh, the work that you guys are doing too to kind of maintain those connections and kind of keep some of the things that the chapter does uh, up and going through a, a kind of unusual time. So we appreciate the opportunity to come join you this morning and share a little bit about uh, kind of what the last few months have been like for us. It has been an unusual time, as you would expect, in, in healthcare, and we were hoping to this morning just quickly give you a little window into how things are going in terms of employee engagement and communication and some of the things that have changed and some of the things that, that haven't changed, some of the basic principles that have really been reinforced by what's been going on the last few months. So I'm going to attempt to share my screen. Uh, I'm a long time listener on Zoom calls, but I'm a first time screen sharer. So we'll see, uh, we'll see how that goes and we'll see if we can get the presentation set up for you here. How does that look? Can you guys, can you guys see my first slide there? All right, great, great. So where we wanted to start, Yvette and I were kind of talking about this when, when this opportunity came up to us to kind of give everybody some insight and, and some views into the sorts of things that we're doing really to provide a structural framework, a strategic framework for all of the things that are going on uh, right now. And like Jeremy mentioned, a crisis like this does really kind of raise the importance of communication and it really raises the importance of all the things that we have to do to help people understand how they fit into all the things that they're being asked to do and all the things that are that are rapidly evolving. You know, we use the phrase connecting the dots uh, a lot. We see ourselves that way as being kind of 
people that are in the position that a public relations person typically is in, where you're able to see all the different parts of an organization. Maybe you don't have as much depth in your view as people in individual silos within a situation or an organization, but you're able to see a lot of things from a, from a broad 40,000 foot perspective. And it's really up to us to kind of make some of those connections and really draw together the overall thing that is happening. And we think about that a lot of times in terms of storytelling and in terms of telling the ongoing story of the organization. So in a crisis, we know that people really want facts, transparency, and content. They need to know exactly what's going on. They need to know the facts. There's like nuts and bolts things that we have to convey. It's really important for an organization and for any of us that, that practitioner public relations to be as transparent as possible. People can sense that authenticity. We work, you know, kind of all of the time to be trusted in all of the things that we do. We do that with our audiences, and I know all of you do that with the people you serve as well. And then that context, the story of what's happening and how this all fits together. And really PR, PR pros are the people in the room that make that connection. It's a vital part of what we all do. The photo on this first slide is actually from one of our early incident command meetings. Uh, incident command, for those of you not familiar with emergency management things, is a structure that's essentially stood up in a disaster or for the management of an emergency. We've seen this you know, before where it would be set up like after an ice storm, tornado. I, I believe this is now the longest incident command any of us have seen at Cox Health. That goes on uh, almost five months later, still meeting on a regular basis with all of those experts in the room. And as the PIOs, a lot of times it's up to us to really synthesize that information, get it out to the people who know it, figure out what is most important and kind of draw those connections, tie things together. So a lot of the work that we do with our employee audience is very similar to the work that, that all of us do as public relations professionals. And a lot of that is about laying the groundwork of transparency and trust. As you all know, you know, you can't begin crisis communication in the crisis. All of the, your communication efforts really begin long before there is a crisis. All the things that we do to try to make sure that people trust us and try to make sure that people understand that we are serving them and we are going to be here to convey the information that they need to know and we're going to be transparent with them. All of that really gets heightened and, and really pays off in, in a crisis like this. And so for all of us as, as PR practitioners, it's important to think about the ways that we are laying the groundwork with the people that we serve really in our day-to-day -day work. You know, we think about how a crisis kind of reveals who you are. All of the things that are going well in your organization or in you know, whatever situation you're in will come to light in a crisis. And if there are things you need to fix or things that could be a little better, those will be revealed as well. And so we hope to give you a few examples today of some of the things that we've done and some of the things that are, are sort of working well uh, for us. Just for those of you who don't know, that a lot of you on the call are familiar with Cox Health, but for those of you who don't know, you know, typically we deliver information for employee engagement through really a, a variety of tools. We rely a lot on email publications. We have an intranet for employees. We do a lot of digital signage. Uh, you see one of our digital signs here that's out uh, in our break rooms, cafeterias, at time clocks, kind of a variety of different channels. Uh, we also do a traditional magazine that is now an email publication. We'll talk a little bit about that. And then we do ongoing focus groups with our employee communication council. It's really a key listening tool for us to be able to hear back uh, from our employees. So I'm gonna hand it off to Yvette. She's gonna talk a little bit about some of the different levels of needs that we try to serve in terms of what people need from us in our communication. Everybody, so, you know, in a communication, <clears throat> excuse me, in a crisis, the communication needs of your audience, your employees, your stakeholders really become more complex as people really struggling with understanding what's happening, what's going on. And so you need to be sure that your communication is layered to fit those particular needs. For example, on a very basic level, your employees will wanna know 
tell me what I need to know to do my job today. You know, things that were coming so fast, changes are happening so fast. What they were doing a month ago or even yesterday is different than what they're doing today. And so we needed to do a good job of telling them what they needed to do, to do literally to do their job. And so right away, early on, we created the coronavirus blog page. So people knew that when there was a news uh, change that that was the one place that they could go to find that information and we're still updating it and refining that page and on another level people want to know the big picture they want to know while they're doing their job that someone else is thinking about the plan how, how do we deal with this crisis what's the plan tell me the structure so we did talk a lot about incident command but there were leaders thinking and meeting we're still meeting twice a week and we're reporting on the changes in that. And that lets them know through that uncertain time that there is a structure. And hopefully we think that it reduced their anxiety about how our organization is approaching. Am I going to lose my job when we close a whole surgery center? You know, what's that big picture? Let me feel better about this, this chaos. Give me that control in the chaos. And we're hoping that we did a good job with that. And then on a very personal level, people want to know the stories. How am I experiencing this? How am I doing? And sometimes I learn about that when I hear the stories of other people. So we wanted to tell really good stories to give that context to help people see that we got this, we're, we're doing okay, we're really okay today because read the stories of how we're able to find people jobs, doing things that they weren't doing the other day, but now they, they're, they're whole, they're here, and we're, we care about them. And that makes us feel good about how the organization is responding. So how, are we, how do we know that we're doing a good job at all of this? Even in a crisis, you have to have goals, right? You have to have some strategy around your communication. How do we know when things are working well? Well, fortunately, Cox Health, every year we do an employee survey. And our employee satisfaction survey for our team, and really it's become for our organization, it's a guidepost of where the communication needs to focus. Because an employee satisfaction survey really gives you key themes on how any worker any, in any organization how their per, uh, perception is shaped around their organization and their work environment. So things like, do I feel safe at work? Do I trust the people I work with? Do I feel respected? So those basic things that we always wanna address during our year. And um, because people don't really know, oh, do I feel safe? What are the things you're doing to make me feel safe? The storytellers in an organization are the key people to make that, bring that awareness to them, to let them know how we're doing to take care of you in, in your work-life balance and all of those things. We are the true dot connectors. As Randy said, we connect the dots and that's what our, our role is here. And so that survey is a guidepost for us during the year, during regular years, and especially during this year when things like key focus areas like working well together, teamwork, when sometimes we think, well, how do we do, tell stories about teamwork? It's naturally come to the surface during this crisis because people had to work well together. They were, they were thrown into situations that they had to show teamwork and they were displaying that and we were hearing those stories and we were, it was easier <clears throat> now more than ever to find those stories because in a crisis, those types of things bubble up to the top. So we have our employee survey during, we plan for it during March and April. At that time, we were really heavy into our preparations for COVID. And for a time we said, well, maybe we shouldn't do the survey because people were too distracted. After about a month, we decided to have that survey. And uh, we were glad we did because we were telling those stories. And I think our leaders really recognized, wow, we are doing teamwork. We are doing things to make people have that work-life balance. We are focusing on safety. And so it was a natural thing for us to go ahead and have that survey. We'll tell you how we did in a little bit. So as Yvette mentioned, you know, that survey, we, you know, we, we talk a lot about the tactics and then the structure that drive the tactics. And so for us as a team, the survey really provides our strategic structure. We do a lot of, of tactics, different ways that we deliver information, different ways that we tell stories. But the stuff from the survey kind of helps guide us. We think about like how we can reinforce pride in working at Cox Health. 
How can we reinforce that senior leadership is doing a good job leading the organization? How can we kind of make those connections for people? And Yvette mentioned a couple of things about safety. You'll see a couple of examples of that as well. That, that's really the overall structure that we think of when we're laying out what stories we're going to cover, how we're going to approach things. And so we're really thinking of, of two things when we make all of the communication that we do on a, on a daily basis. We're thinking about reinforcing our culture. And this is something that all of us, I think, can think about when we were creating PR content. We look for things like teamwork that we want to highlight, illustrate, reinforce, and push forward. And then we also think about things that, what could be better? The survey tells us, you know, uh, again, around safety. That's been a, a major focus for us for the last couple of years. It's something where, you know, in the past few years, maybe employees might have been talking about the potential for workplace violence. So we did a lot of things around de-escalation, around security, around things that really kind of help address some of those concerns. And then we communicated about those things. We found the people who did the training. We talked about how they did that to kind of reflect that back to people, to show people, here are the things you're telling us, here, here's how we're addressing those things. So that kind of guides us on that level. And then the second level we think about um, when we are creating communication is how to engage with personal stories. So like for the last few months, we've, it's been difficult to do the kind of regular strategic storytelling that we would normally do. Like normally we would be talking about what are the big structural things that this organization is moving toward, the things you're gonna to need to know in the next few months, they're going to change you know, the way you work. And now it's more like things are changing so quickly, multiple times a week, and that makes it harder to plan that out. And so we really committed to just keep telling the organization's story through the crisis. Whatever's going on, as transparent as we can be with staff members, we want to keep doing that. And then we want to make sure that we're telling those stories through engagement with personal stories. So you'll see in a lot of these examples, we made an effort to go find the frontline people that are affected by the things we're talking about and really make the stories about them. That's a thing that of course everybody connects with. It's much easier to connect with what my personal colleague is doing than it is you know, some strategic thing that an organization needs me to do. And so those are the things that we're trying to, trying to flesh out. And then as Yvette mentioned, one of the things we found through doing that is in a crisis like this where we're all in this together, people are really eager to, to share their stories and there's almost a, a cathartic element to being able to talk to one another about what my experience is and, and what it's been like for me. And then people really enjoy seeing those stories reflected back to them. So it's been a great, great engagement thing for us. So we've got a series of examples that we're going to walk you through and kind of let you see some of the things we've been doing uh, over the last few months. Okay, the first one is leadership communication. You know, it's always important for your leaders to have a voice and for you to um, give them a way to share what's on their mind during the year, during a regular year. And that's even more important during a crisis. So we are fortunate that we have a leader in Steve Edwards who understands about communication and cares about communication. And we hear from him regularly throughout the year and he travels to all of our campuses to do face-to-face -face meetings. But in a crisis, he understood that he needed to be more visible, even more than he usually is, and focus on the business response and tell us how we're doing. What are those technical things? What are we looking at? What are the gaps? How are we doing as an organization? And we shared that uh, internally and externally. So you saw a series of video messages that really gave that context and um, was a key voice internally, but also in with our public. And we also, because this was a, a multifaceted uh, crisis, we needed um, other avenues, other people, other sources of leadership that we needed to hear from because it was a complex crisis, right? And so you need to be sure that you are hitting in a crisis, what are those leaders, not specifically, but what are those aspects of a crisis that we need to be talking about? So we had a, someone who was talking about our organization and from a business perspective, from an operational perspective, and then from a clinical perspective, we used one of our key infectious uh, disease experts, Dr. Trotman, to really help us understand and, and specifically debunking some myths um, that we're hearing about COVID-19 and about the coronavirus. And so we used Dr. Trotman at more 
than I've ever known him for 12 years. And he really stepped up to be that voice that we needed internally to let us know what is going on and what do we need to understand about these, this real threat to our health and the, the way we do our work. So leadership communication was a, a key um, factor and is a key factor on our employee survey. We, people want to know that they have good leaders who want to talk to them and, and um, are open with our communication and transparent. The second thing is, is really a great aspect. It just makes me warm and fuzzy about my workplace. And I, I think it's the one thing that people really understood the level of support and commitment that our organization and our senior leaders had to them in a very personal way. You know, when we closed surgery centers, when we stopped orthopedic surgeries at our Moore campus, and closed other um, aspects of our operations. We had people who did not have jobs, who were displaced. But our culture is that we commit to not doing layoffs and doing everything we can to avoid layoffs. And so during that crisis, our HR team and our senior leaders really stood up a program really quickly to figure out a way to take those people and plug them into different jobs and so that they could be working at different jobs at their same rate of pay because we care about them. We care about their families in this community. And so fitness center people who were doing entrance screeners and people who were at the Martin Center nurses doing outpatient surgeries were all of a sudden with the nurses in our dialysis center learning about that new skill, you know, building new skills, building a team together. And then the, the thing about our survey that we've been focusing on the last couple of years, we're telling stories about how we work well together and how we do teamwork. Like I said before, those are kind of hard concepts to kind of capture in stories. Well, through this crisis, because we were um, keeping people employed, they were telling us, wow, I feel so proud. I feel committed to the organization. Look how well we're working together. I mean, those are key phrases from our survey. And as communicators, Randy and I were just like so thrilled to be seeing our talking points, right, being actually lived out, our survey being actually lived out in the shared experiences from our organization. So it's so exciting and, and easy to capture those stories and to tell them. So we actually really had a key focus because we were listening to our employees and they were telling us that they're so grateful and so appreciative of the leadership of the teamwork and having those great experiences through a crisis that's pretty amazing all right another thing that we got to see is again a big focus on safety safety during our year but when we make an unprecedented effort to secure ppe that filled warehouses and filled meeting rooms this is a, millions of, of uh, gowns and N95 masks, things that you now are aware of. Well, we wanted to tell that story. Not only was it a good, a great example of what our organization is doing to keep them safe, um, to have that protective equipment, it also was the beginning of our behind the scenes series. So I wanna tell you, we care about our warehouse folks, but on a typical day, right Randy, we wouldn't be going to the warehouse to hear them talk about what's in your warehouse today. But in a crisis when, when PPE is so important and having it available for our employees, our clinical staff is important, we went behind the scenes here and told them, look at what our employees are doing in the warehouse, some of whom were actually displaced but right, workers who were used, used to be doing one thing, now that they were working in the warehouse, and so we were able to tell that story too. So this was part of our behind the scenes uh, series that actually is still going on today. You know, we have a what about me culture, right? We know you guys don't, but people we don't, usually don't hear from love telling their story. So we're glad to do that. And then another way we went uh, behind the scenes was just talking about all the change. And so sometimes in a crisis, change is happening so fast, you really need to stop and capture that change because there are so many great wins and so many great innovations that people come together to do. For example, we have virtual visits at Cox Health and we provide them to anyone in, uh, in Missouri. Well, on a Friday, it was decided that we needed to do virtual visits for anyone in Missouri for free, right? So we could capture the COVID symptoms and, and get them to testing so we can identify those people regardless of their ability to pay. And so our virtual visits team 
got people together because we needed to train more people. When people called in, hundreds of more people called in every day to keep them in queue and manage that, that influx of people. And so we needed to train nurse practitioners, other providers. And so our virtual visits team came together and we were able to capture stories like this about very rapid change that we all could step back and say, wow, that's amazing. We all could feel good about what it is we're doing. We were the storytellers. You're the storytellers that tell those stories so people can feel good about the, the things that we're doing in a crisis. And there, there are really so many great personal stories out there to be, to be told, you know, in just in this photo. So I believe this uh, might've been on a Sunday. Um, and the lady with her back to us, that's uh, Bridget O'Hara. Lady to the right is Megan Pippin. So Bridget and Megan have worked for a long time on virtual visits, telehealth, things like that. And so we went and followed up with them because they were the ones who were in here on the weekend, making sure that we had hundreds of people trained to be able to handle the volume of virtual visits. It was a, a record level of volume for us. And of course, you know, they were very happy to talk about the work they're doing that like Yvette said, you know, like with the warehouse, you know, telehealth warehouse stuff, you need that stuff to work. But a lot of times you're not thinking that much about it. And then to really pull those people out and kind of highlight them and tell their stories. They're really eager to do that. And it's, it's a good look into kind of behind the scenes, the way things work for these individuals who, who do so much work for us all the time. And the crisis has really, has really brought that forward. I'll point out one other thing with this photo. You'll notice a lot of the photos we're using today include tabs with the date and there's a reason for that. That's a new thing that we're doing because the rules around PPE and how many people can be in a room, and whether or not we should be wearing masks, as those evolve, we are putting dates on all of our images so that everyone knows that this was early on before some of those rules uh, were in place. So that's a new kind of thing that, that we've started doing uh, with, the, with the photos that we share. So a couple more examples of things that we've kind of been working on and sharing in our storytelling. I wanted to, to show some of the things we've done around innovation. Uh, this is Scott Rogers there on the left. A lot of you will recognize Scott as being somebody who has been focused on innovation for us as an organization the last few years. These are some of the printed um, and laser cut screen shields uh, that we've been doing with, in partnership with uh, the folks over at JVIC. So this is kind of a good tangible example of an innovation that we made thousands of these things uh, then and deployed them. This is another one of our meeting rooms. Uh, meeting rooms have become kind of PPE storage for us now that PPE is uh, more prominent than, than meetings. And so we kind of talked with Scott a little bit about that. And then this is a good example of something that we've been laying the groundwork for, for a long time. You know, in the past, Healthcare is not always a field that you would think of as being really fast moving. Sometimes things can move a little bit slow because there's so much complexity. But Scott and his team have kind of worked on bringing an innovation culture here. You know, we've done the innovation accelerator each year in partnership with the E-Factory. And in part, that's been kind of an engagement and almost recruitment and retention sort of thing for us because people want to be able to bring their ideas to a situation. They want to interact and, and make change happen. And so we've spent a few years trying to build that up as part of our culture. And that's really paying off for us now. We've seen a lot of things through incident command, even inside departments where people are bringing ideas forward. We have a way to make those ideas happen now. And so we were able to put together a couple of stories really around the various innovations we've done around PPE, around the things that we're making, around the partnerships that we've done, like with local manufacturers. And all of that really kind of comes out of that innovation side of things. And that's something that we've really been able to use as a way to, to reinforce that as, as part of our culture. Another good example of that, you know, we, we thought about things that have changed, things that we've really had to adapt to. And one of those things is patient experience. You know, our patient experience team, they are the folks that kind of handle our patients and their families satisfied with the care they're receiving, the work they're doing, how do we make those connections? And so early on, when we had unusual visitor restrictions for everybody's safety, that team really scrambled to find ways to keep people connected. So they deployed iPads. They were doing essentially like, like a virtual visit with your family member. And so when we heard they were doing that, we reached out to that team and went and talked to some of the people who do day-to-day -day work 
as essentially, you know, patient service folks. So this photo in this story is one of, an example of one of the window visits that they did just with telephones. So in some areas like rehab areas, patients were able to come to windows and, and interact with their family members. And then in other areas, they were working with technology through the iPads. And so those, those staff members in the Office of Patient Experience really had um, a, a lot of intense personal stories about what that's like to serve as that bridge in, in a difficult time, because frequently when they were using the technology, things were, were difficult for, for the patient. A lot of times those cases were, were particularly challenging. And so we, we kind of heard from them, Office of Patient Experience folks, as being the people who kind of make that connection. They kind of talked about why that makes them proud to work here, why it, it kind of lets them participate in the healthcare process. They, they really had the, the why behind the work they do kind of reinforced by the intensity of some of those situations. Another example of that, so we wanted to hear directly from some people who had experienced COVID-19. And so uh, my colleague in Branson, uh, Brandy Clifton, found a couple of staff members at Cox Branson who had had COVID-19 and she went and talked with them and kind of shared their stories. These both appeared on coxhealth.com, on our intranet and in social media. And as you can imagine, those stories were particularly compelling and intense. Um, Sterrett here, who you see in this story, came down with COVID-19 relatively early on. She actually lost her mom to COVID-19 and she wanted to tell her story to kind of reinforce for everybody the, the importance of what's happening here and, and how real and intense this is. Her story and another story that Brandon and Brandy did actually played a role in Branson's masking ordinance. We heard directly back from some of the, some of the people on the, the Board of Aldermen who had been, who'd read those stories. And, and had it reinforced to them how vital it is to, to engage in everything we can do to prevent this disease. So it's a powerful thing that, that we were able to, again, share through, share through stories. Last example of this, I wanted to show you just a glimpse of our Heroes Work Here um, program that we're doing. This is something that we talked about doing early on. Uh, our marketing team developed this Heroes Work Here template that you see. We really, again, wanted to reflect to people the work that they're doing and, and help them participate in, in understanding we know they are heroes and we wanted to, to reflect that to everybody. So you saw some of these images on billboards, in advertisements, in our daily email publication. We use them in the headers up there. We reached out to, to staff members and we asked them, you know, send us a photo from your area, send us a, a selfie of yourself inappropriate PPE and, and, and share that with us so we can cultivate real frontline people. And that is, that is a new thing for us. You know, we also did some of the traditional advertising with a lot of lighting, a lot of production, but we really kind of switched that uh, for COVID-19 to feature as many real people as possible. It's like, just like we are now accepting that this is the way we do meetings, um, Culture now really accepts some of the, the grittier, uh, more hand-produced uh, art like this. And, and it, in a way, is more engaging and, and feels more real and more immediate in a situation like this. So we got a lot of those submissions. And then we asked people when we, when we made that request, you know, to include your cell phone number, include contact information, because we want to follow back up with you. And so we're kind of working our way through that now following back up with those folks and doing interviews with them, doing profiles that you'll see on coxhealth.com, in our social media, and again, on our intranet. And so Cheryl here, uh, who you see on the right, Cheryl Nold, uh, was one of the first people who had sent us uh, her selfie. And so I got to talk with her a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Cheryl's an interesting story. She is a nursing assistant. She actually just started as a nursing assistant in January. So she got a full 10 weeks of regular work before she was in, in the midst of, of a pandemic. And you know, she had really some, some very powerful things to say about how that reinforced uh, to her the importance of the decision she had made to come into healthcare. You know, it, it wasn't something she thought twice about, and, and in fact, it really, this is what she wanted to do. And everybody we've talked to has talked about 
how impressive it's been to see some of the teamwork and to see the, the teams that they're working alongside and really to be a part of this organization. They frequently mention our senior leadership team and, and a lot of the things that we've seen from Steve Edwards and Robin Trotman and some of the things that they've done that's really getting reflected in those staff members. And, and Yvette and I are really happy to see that because those are things that were surveyed on. And it's a good example of, of kind of closing that loop for us and for us to be able to share those staff members' stories, let them tell everybody about what they're experiencing. That, you know, for us, kind of reinforces the work that we do and make, makes me proud to be able to participate in, in telling that story and, and sharing that so that everybody can see it. And of course, these are very well engaged with on our intranet. People love to see their colleagues. They love to see people that they feel like, you know, this is Cheryl or Bridget that you see here is a person that maybe might normally be behind the scenes and is now front and center. And people really appreciate that. And they really appreciate engaging with So I think it's important to remember that the, the importance of the role that you are playing in your organization during a crisis and during normal times, but especially during a crisis. People are having experiences, your coworkers are having experiences in this time, but it takes you doing those stories, asking them how they're doing, what stands out to them, you know, give them, ask some questions like, are we working well together? Find those opportunities to tell those good stories within your organization, even during a crisis. So listening is always important and we need to listen even better than we usually do because we're the ones that tell those stories, right? So how do we do in our survey? Are we want to know survey? So we did do the survey, we decided to do that. And it was, we were so glad that we did because we were just hearing, organic examples as like working well together that people were experiencing. And so even during a crisis, we were able to have a re another record, we tied last year's record participation of 92%. In an organization of over 12,000 people, 92% of them took our employee satisfaction survey, which was amazing. And even more amazing, which we, I knew instinctively that people were feeling better about their work environment, better about their experience, their perceptions were improving just by the feedback we were getting, the stories we were telling. And it was true. The results, we just got back. Every single question, the survey questions rose, the results rose from year over year, except one question, and it stayed the same. It was flat. So we actually moved seven percentile points, national percentile ranking points. And our survey vendor said that very few com uh, companies in the world can have that much movement that fast. And I just really feel that part of telling that story, um, not to give us credit, Randy, uh, but you know, how do people know how we're dealing in a crisis if we're not sharing the story? So let's pat ourselves, let's all, Jeremy, let's, Andrea, let's all pat ourselves on the back. We're doing important work. And one of the standout questions, we had several things, like I said, rose, but one of them, if a major change occurs, I can count on senior leadership to explain why. And the why connecting the dots, that's the key thing that you are doing right now during this crisis. And when you tell those good stories, when you connect the dots on key themes, People understand that they're in a good place, that they have better perceptions about their work environment that increases their satisfaction with their workplace, even during a crisis. They can feel better about their organizations when you tell those good stories. So here are a few things that we wanted to kind of leave you with in terms of, of things that, that you can consider doing, things that, that we've kind of learned from this. And really the first one is to just think about continuing to, sh to share your organization's story. You know, when any crisis is going on, it's, it's important to have those touch points where people know you're going to get a, a regular update, you know, whether it's daily or weekly or, or whatever, that, that's calming to people and it's helpful for people to know that the organization or whomever you're communicating with, you know, is talking to me and is taking the time to kind of keep me updated. And that might not look like what you would normally do, but it is important to think about ways to, to keep doing that because people really need it. They need to be able to, to hear from you and, and hear what's going on. It's really valuable to them. And the second thing is really to make sure that you're, you're listening to that audience. You know, we don't have all of this figured out, 
This is very unusual for everybody right now. And so listening has always been important to us, but it's really been, it's more important than ever to us now because this is a shared event that we are all going through together. And so just being able to hear from people and hear their experiences and see what we can pull out of that to, to share and reinforce, that, that's been a, a really important thing for us. You know, a lot of the people we work with in healthcare, those were challenging, difficult jobs to begin with, even before the pandemic. We, we would spend a lot of time thinking about how do, we, how do we make this the best place to work? How do we make this a place that people are really proud to come and be here every day and feel like this organization cares about me? Because these people give a lot to Cox Health and they give a lot to our patients and we want to do everything we can to, to support them. And, and that, that was you know pre-pandemic. And now they are going through this and, and making all of the same adjustments that we're making and, and really kind of having to alter their daily work as well. So it's really more important than ever that we kind of try to keep them tied to this organization and, and help them under, understand the, the context of, of everything we're doing. And I think any organization can think about things that way and think about listening to their people and listening to what the challenges are, what they can work on and, and what's going well. And then that kind of ties into the last thing, you know, think about what is great about your culture that's being pulled forward by this. Think about good examples of that that you can share. And then you can also think about things that you want to work on because right now with things changing so quickly, if you want to make a change or you want to try something different, this is a great time to do it. You know, I, I, I dislike the header on this slide because it includes the word unprecedented. And I think we're about ready to retire the word unprecedented because we've been saying unprecedented times for months. And so now there is a precedent. It was like the last five months. So this may be the last time you, you see that word. But we have had to think about it this way. I mean, this is very different than what we've experienced in, in our time as, as PR folks you know, doing employee engagement stuff. And so like what you see here on the internet, this is an all new thing for us. You got employee stuff up there. You got hearing directly from Steve Edwards. You've got a story about, you know, essentially a, a day school program that was put together in a matter of weeks over at the Meyer Center. You know, you've got things about infection prevention. It's, it's, a, it's a very unusual time for us. And so one of the ways that we've kind of coped with that is just by trying new things and, and taking chances. I, I mentioned that our, our magazine, we had talked about what would happen if it was delivered entirely digitally before. Um, and we had some plans for it. We had different ways that we might do it. And then this spring, you know, the, the time frames in which things change were too tight to do a print magazine anyway. So that gave us an opportunity. Now we have months of data on how well people respond to a digital publication because what we had to do and nobody raised any questions about why we were doing that. They understood that this, these are unusual times. And so it really gave us an opportunity to, to kind of take that chance and try something different. And same thing with, with listening. You know, the, the approach we're taking to heroes work here, we could have done that anytime where we could have said, and we had in the past on a smaller scale, reached out to people to, to have them tell our stories, but that's something that we will continue past the pandemic. It's been really effective to just say, send me a photo and then send me your contact information and let me, let me talk to you about how your day is going, what it means to you to work here, and, and help us share that story and share all of these different perspectives because people really connect with those things. It's really valuable for folks. And the last thing I want to leave you with, this is actually something that one of the nurses told me in one of those hero's stories. You know, sometimes at the end of an interview, you'll ask somebody, what didn't we touch on that you, that you want to share? What, what do you wish people knew? What do, you, what do you want to share with everybody? And this is what she said. This is not about nurses and doctors. I want everyone working through this to know you're needed, you're appreciated, and everyone is making a difference. And she mentioned, you know, specifically on the Cox Health side, the people in the cafeteria. The cafeteria is kind of keeping her alive right now. She also mentioned, you know, some of the environmental services folks, the cleaning folks. But then she also mentioned in her personal life, the people working in retail, the people working at PetSmart, the people working in food service, you know, in the public. That's the message she wanted to get out to everybody, that we are all in this together. And 
this is unprecedented and unusual for all of us, but everybody that is working through this, and that includes all of us on this call, we're doing valuable needed work and people do notice and they, and they do appreciate it. And so that, that's a, a final thought that I thought was valuable for, for all of us this morning that, uh, that we wanted to leave you with. Excellent. So, and we, we'd be glad to, to talk about a few questions too, if, uh, if you guys have any. Yeah, and, and I was gonna say, I was gonna encourage everybody if you, if you do have questions, go ahead and uh, to drop those into the chat. We, we do have one that came in um, asking about uh, what the response had been specifically to asking the audience to, to share their stories and uh, kind of what platforms you've used to capture those. So the, the response to that was a little bit overwhelming. Um, what we did was we used a marketing submission email. And so a couple of the folks in marketing kind of helped us sort those. And so what we did, you know, we do a daily email publication that is, that is our most popular form of, uh, of communication. And so we included it in there. We told people kind of what we wanted, what we were trying to capture, and, and had them submit the selfies with their contact information. And there are a lot of them. I had to pull them off onto the server uh, because they filled up my email. And I mentioned that we are kind of still now working through those because in the early days, there were a lot of other things going on. And so we've kind of recast that now as I'm following back up with you, you know, weeks and months later, because now is the time that we kind of have time to do that. And so those stories are becoming more about, tell me what the last few months have been like uh, for you. You know, and so initially we, saw, we used a lot of those photos in the stuff that we can produce pretty quickly, digital signage, uh, billboards, ads, uh, headers for our email, things like that. And then now we are kind of following back up. I've been, you know, the last three or four weeks, you know, just texting people, calling people on their phones and like, where, where can I get 10 minutes with you to, to tell me a little bit about what the last few months have been like. And then we've been capturing those in, in short profiles that, uh, that we're sharing on the internet and on coxup.com. And it's been, it's been a really, it's been a really popular thing for us. Like people are, are very eager to, to talk about their particular role and kind of what it's meant to them. And so we've heard from, we've heard from people on the front lines. Uh, I got to talk to a social worker, you know, which is a, another kind of work that you don't, maybe don't think about as much when you're thinking about clinical things. And I talked to, you know, some nurses in the emergency department who, I mean, they are used to crisis emergency level stuff. And, and this, is, this is challenging for them, you know, for people who work in, in the emergency field. But just to be able to capture those stories and, and kind of share those has been a powerful thing for us. I mean, all of them are having their decisions to work in healthcare really reinforced by, by what is going on right now. I can add one thing real quickly. If you don't do an annual employee engagement survey, asking that particular question is a really good way to do right now to find the themes. When someone in a crisis is telling you what they are enjoying and appreciating about your organization in a crisis, you've just identified the key employee engagement themes that you need to reinforce and, and asking what, what's not working well, well, you also just found out the things that you need to work on as an organization. So that I think right now is an important thing to be asking. Tell us about your experience. What have you learned? What, you know, what do you feel about your organization? That's gonna uncover, uncover a lot about your culture and some key themes that are working well and what needs to be improved. So, so one question that, that, that I had, um, it, listening, listening to you talking about the, these engagement uh, techniques for kind of for internal communications, um, just as I'm listening, it seems like there are a lot of places where you could, if you just took out the took out the language about employees and changed that to the public or customers or clients or stakeholders, a lot of these same techniques would probably be fairly effective for external communications. Um, so I, I wonder if, if you think there are specific elements of what you have been doing that could, with 
either some slight tweaking or just exactly as you've been doing them that could be used for um, improving engagement externally. Yeah, I think, I think I definitely think a lot of those principles apply across the board. I mean, a lot of them are fundamental PR principles that, that anybody, can, anybody can use with whatever audience you're trying to serve. And of course, a, a lot of the things that we do have a lot of crossover since, you know, employees, there's 12,000 of them, they're in the public as well. And so a lot of that engagement does, does cross over. But yes, I, I agree. I think, I think those principles do apply everywhere. Sorry, Ben, I think you were about to say something. Well, I was just going to say that, you know, we always have a mix of about, um, you know, we, we usually keep the things that we're doing that we want to talk to our internal audience internal. But I think we've done a lot of transitioning where in a crisis, what you're telling your employee, your employees, the, the, the public needs to know about that, that gave them context even during the crisis when they heard from Cox Health as a major employer, as a healthcare provider, we were really speaking, we felt responsible to, to speak to our community. And so you saw a lot of the things we were doing on our digital, our internal electronic newsletter, we, for the first time, we're posting those externally to, to share that story uh, externally too. So not only the tactics, but the actual messages for the first time, we're really across the board, across those platforms and those audiences. And what kind of response have you gotten from the public when you've been posting some of those items? Well, we've heard great, I mean, Ours, especially our social media, was an opportunity to answer questions, debunk some myths, to clarify things that weren't about Cox Health, but were about the crisis and our response to it. And that we, we always think about our social media presence as customer engagement, right, with our, with our patients and our community. But it seemed like that was even more important. And a lot of the things when we were sharing about our approach to keeping employees and, and our, our PPE, securing our PPE and keeping our employees employed, all of those things, just like internally, people just, their appreciation of their workplace and their leaders just went to a new level. It was like the, the public and our community, really their satisfaction with Cox Health rose even more as we were telling those stories because there couldn't be a vacuum of communication in a crisis. And especially in, in, a, in a crisis, we need to hear from leaders. We need to hear what, how we're dealing with it because it lets us know how we're okay and that we're dealing with it. And so the engagement that we've gotten from all of our posts have been amazing. Those videos, the senior leader videos, Dr. Trotman, I mean, it's elevated Dr. Trotman as a doctor to somebody in the state, in the nation, who is that voice and the same with Steve Edwards. And I think people have appreciated, We've captured uh, some of the feedback that we've gotten from the public about how great the heroes are doing internally, how thankful they are for the caregivers. And we capture that in our voice of the customer. We started something called voice of encouragement, right? To keep the encouragement things going. And so we grabbed the comments from the public and shared them internally to say, you are doing great. We, you are appreciated. Keep it up. We, you, you are valued. Look what your public is saying about you. So that's been really encouraging to see that full circle of communication that is informing, educating, and encouraging us all at the same time. Sure. Well, we are approaching 9.15. Um, I don't see any other questions coming up in the chat. So uh, Yvette, Randy, uh, if you have any final thoughts that you want to share, I'll give you a chance to do that. Um, while we wait to see if anybody has a last question they want to drop in the chat, but uh, any, any final thoughts you want to share? I would just say, just remember, even in a crisis that the goals, your, your communication goals still matter. The tools that you have, you really find out what's working, what you are, what's the gap and to identify those gap and you can, those gaps and you can make those adjustments very quickly. I encourage everyone to do that. And then I encourage you to just be, as you are personally experiencing this change to a level that we've never experienced before, so are your colleagues, 
So are the teachers, so are the students, wherever workplace you are in. Ask them if there's something very therapeutic about hearing, telling your story, and those stories can lead to an overall that we are okay. We're getting through this. We're going to be better. You know, we're coming out better in a lot of ways as we learn and we grow. And I cannot emphasize enough the role that you are playing right now in this moment as a communicator is so vitally important to tell those stories, to, to get a, share a sense of how your organization is standing up because history will show that we survived this and it was the storytellers that made such a big difference in how uh, understanding what we've all been through. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I, I, would, I would agree with and, and echo that. And I mean, just a couple of other things. This is definitely a time to, to think about your own innovation and things that, that you might consider doing differently. People, people will give you a lot of leeway uh, right now. It's a, it's a good time to experiment with things. People understand how unusual this situation is. So it, it's a good time if there's something that, you want, that you've been thinking about trying. If there's something that in your listening you've, you've wanted to implement or, or adjust, it's a, it's a particularly good time to do that. And then the second thing, you know, as, as you listen, it's, it's important for all of us to really extend a, a lot of grace to, to everybody because this is a challenge in lots of different ways for lots of different people. And it, it's, it's always difficult to know what other people are, are going through, but we have to be mindful of that. And communication people, I think, are well positioned to, to kind of be the people who give some thought to what others are, are going through. And it's important for all of us to do that for one another and be supportive of one another and really um, give, give ourselves uh, some, some grace as well, because we are all in, in an unusual situation that we're, that we're working our, our way through. And, and so and it's an opportunity to, to grow and try new things, opportunity to do that personally as well, and for us to kind of be there for one another too and be able to, to support one another as we kind of, kind of work through this. Absolutely. Randy, Yvette, thank you so much for not just for joining us today, but for everything that, that you and, and Cox Health are doing throughout all of this. You've been a leader in the community throughout this whole, this whole crisis. Uh, we appreciate everything that you're doing. So uh, know that you have our appreciation throughout this and as we move forward. So, so thank you for that. Um, you might have noticed in the chat, you've gotten an invitation to, to share your insights again uh, with the folks at Drury. So um, I might let, Regina might be following up with you on that. So, um, awesome. uh, so, so thank you again. Um, I, will, I will remind everyone that if you are free on September 22nd, that is our, that is our next event. So I um, hope you have the opportunity to join us then and we'll be sending out information about that uh, very soon. Uh, and with that, uh, we will wrap up and hope everyone stay safe and have a good day. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.